Okay, let's try some photo stamping again. I haven't done that for a little bit of time. Um, these are a couple different cloud pictures, and I have a lot of them that I've taken recently that are all available on my Flickr account. You can download them for free, print them out. I had mine printed out at uh, Costco. I just upload them um, online, and I you know go in there and pick them up. A lot of times they're uh, ready on the same day. Um, as long as it's not the uh, holiday season. Okay, so I'm going to... I, I'm using this uh, nature set number 10 again here just because I have it out and if I'm going to be doing a bunch of things with it, I just assume do it right now for my video formatting and whatnot. But um, I thought I would try that out and um, I've chosen, I don't know, a couple different ones here. Um, this design of the uh, chapel is kind of open in that chapel area, and I mean that there is white space in there, okay? So that being said, I'm going to try it. I have different clouds, but the ones that have too much of the, uh, the hard white than blue open area, or white and dark, um, I'm going to try to avoid, especially if that area was down here, because if I stamp the chapel right over that area, that area in there is going to show right through it okay so I need some open area in here if there's a little bit of shadow like that it doesn't really matter and this one is a really close-up photo I took this you know I really zoomed in here so that there wouldn't be any real harsh um, lines between um, the uh, the clouds in the background um, that were too um, you know uh, distinct in contrast between the clouds and the open sky area. So, and then I've toned down some of the uh, contrast in these photographs uh, as well before I uploaded them. So, as far as um, photographs of clouds, they're really not good at all because we don't have, you know, very much of a distinction going on within here. But it's perfect for us if we're going to be stamping over it because it's kind of more generic in terms of. Uh, the textures that we can see. Okay, so that being said, let's just get on right on to, into it. Um, on these photographs, these this photo paper more specifically, um, I'm finding that, or I've found that, and I was told that um, when photo stamping first came out, thank you Randall Curry, um, that you can just use dye-based inks on photographs and they'll print out just fine and I was always kind of surprised by that because I always thought this was kind of a sealed off paper but it is rather accepting of different um, media and something as kind of thin as dye-based inks, you know, they're watery inks, they're watercolors basically. Okay, now I'm trying to put a little bit of different colors into these trees right here just to see if they'll print out, you know, with a little bit of variation, but I did cover the whole thing up with black first. These are very wide tip Marvy pens, so I find it easy just to go right over the top of them, okay? All right, so let's position this somewhere in here. Right, now I can go a little bit lower and have more sky. I can go a little bit higher and have more ground. I think I'll go about midway. We'll kind of split this right in half here, or maybe on thirds. This is taking up like the third of the, uh, the paper. This is, gosh, I forgot the size of these. Four by six, maybe? Yeah, four by, yeah, these are four by sixes. Okay, print it out like so. See a little bit of variation of the green. It's pretty fun uh, stamping on photographs. There, there's something to be said for having kind of the background quite established, you know, inherently when you're stamping your imagery over the top of it, as opposed to stamping it on a white piece of paper. Although I do prefer the white. I do have a lot of fun doing these um, photo stamping scenes too, just for a little bit of variation. And there, there is quite a bit of um, 
variation that you can infuse into these, even with that established background I'm finding. So, I don't know. I, I just started exploring this um, technique relatively recently, this last year. I mean, I had, I've done it before, but kind of minimally. But I'm finding that um, it's through the different media that we can apply to it. I like to have options when I'm stamping. I don't like to be locked down, you know, to, uh, you know, specifics. Now, that might scare people in terms of um, kind of uh, exploring something, but it doesn't have to be something that is around every little corner. I'm talking about variation in terms of applying a general concept to these pieces, okay? Um, meaning, I like to um, utilize things like white pigment ink in a scene to create fog and depth and lighting in a scene. So when I stamp out this, making impressions, it means I can apply that technique over certain areas. You don't have to be stressed out about, okay, let me see, if I'm going to do pigment ink in there, then where is it going to be? You don't have to know that ahead of time, like when you're getting into it. It's not going to play, you know, much of a part it can, I guess, in terms of the processes, you know, the, the process leading up to the utilization or of a given process, okay? So that, you know, what I mean by that is you can just stamp out your scene, color it, and then apply your pigment ink as needed, and I'll show you when I get into it. Okay. Um, let's go for another one here. I just smeared that one a little bit. <laughs> I kind of rocked it a little bit. I did what I tell everyone not to do, but uh, it's not the end of the world. It's smeared a touch, but by the time you get done, you know, p applying everything in here, it's really not going to, uh, you know, be uh, a major factor. Okay. I don't smear on purpose, but, uh, I mean, now I'm just doing these in black. I tend to think that um, visually, the darker things that are closer to us, are um, darker in value, and it works that way visually. Okay, now, I mean, that chapel, you know, is definitely floating in space, right? And that's where the grounding of it with our textures comes in, okay? So if it was doing a water scene, I, you know, unless it was very still water, like a mirror, you can leave it as is, but I tend to use things like the water pattern to fill in around water scenes. Well, this one right here is just this grass texture, and I tend to use that with grassy scenes, okay? So what do we have? We have two stamps here, but it makes a pretty full statement, right? But we need to anchor it down, okay? So I'm not going to stamp this in my chapel, this little texture right here, okay? But you can go pretty close to the chapel. I know mean, if you get it overlap it a little bit, it's not going to be any kind of problem. Okay, I'm just going to do this one in black. So I did, I went into these steps a little bit, but don't go like an inch into the chapel, but, you know, go pretty far. Just so you ha you're blending everything together and you don't have a bunch of spaces in between things, okay? This one I can just go right over my trees and put some grass underneath that. The tree cluster inherently has some texture in there, but see now we've grounded the chapel. We're going to be filling in with some more ink though. But that gives us our foundation there, nice and easy. I mean, I can do other little things like, you know, in here too. I could mask off that grass and put a tree back there in the distance or something like that. Shall we do that? Let's do that. It'll give us a little bit more depth, so just apply that back on here. By the way, these are the, my cling foam versions. If I was using the unmounted version, I have my tag and peel. 
on the back, and this is tacky right here, see? So you just use your other side of the block for your cling foam, or you can put the cling foam on the tack and peel cover, you know, just keep your cover, you know, if you get this tack and peel material. All right, I'm just coloring in the top here. I really didn't even need to color it that far down, but I did, so be it. Put a little green into it like that, just for a little bit of variation. I need to re-ink these pens here pretty soon. They're pretty dry. All right, so for those of you who think that scenic stamping is really hard, here's your mask right here. And I'm just masking off right here, okay? I don't really need to mask off any of that right there, but I'm just taking this small piece right here. Actually, I, I'll, I'll need to mask off that chapel, but here's your mask technique. It's done. How long did that take? Like a half a second, if that. Anyways, but see, this is a solid tree on both sides, right? But the chapel, here's what I was talking about in terms of open, okay? There's open space in there, so... We want to just generally cover that up, and you know, I have to cover up closely. And I'll put this tree right in here, like that. And look at that, we have that tree way back there in the distance. It looks like a smaller tree, right? But it is repetition of imagery. Here's the trees that are closest. It's the same size, but hopefully that one looks smaller just because I used a smaller portion of it. Or it could be it's a tree on the other side of like a like a hill or something like that. So three stamps and that really filled in that space there, didn't it? I mean there's other types of variations, but I'm just using the uh the set. Um Nature set 10 here images, so I use that for both background and foreground um, imagery. Okay, so um, I need to see if some of my most recent <laughs> impressions are dry. I can't tell here. Photo paper does dry pretty fast, so it's it's pretty good. Um, Dye-based inks are pretty good to use on there. Okay, so, all right. I was going... To, I just grabbed my stylus tools, but I want to make a lot of my recent videos just really, really accessible for those wishing to try something out. You can use whatever types of sponges you have. This isn't... You know, if someone wants to do a painting or something like that, and you see something happening on a video or whatever you're painting along with it. If they're using, you know, Grumbach or, you know, paintbrush or something like that, a lot of times people don't feel that, um, oh, I have to have that brand of paintbrush or something like that. They'll use what they have, but it gets the same thing. Sometimes in stamping, though, they feel that, oh my gosh, I, I can't do it because I don't have that tool right there or whatnot, you know. Um, as far as applicators go, I use these like a wadded up little paper towel and that works really good, right? If you have, I wouldn't use Kleenex or something, that's probably too soft, but you know, a napkin, a paper towel, um, a kitchen sponge, uh, cotton balls I've tried. I didn't like the cotton ball for the color application so much, but uh, it worked though. Okay, so anyways, pear tart. Bamboo leaves, a couple different shades of green, okay? In this scene, if I want to do this on the winter scene, I'd probably do it all in blue. Okay, so let's try this right here. Now, you do kind of have to configure your makeshift brush, okay? Get a good supply of ink on there. Soften it up a little bit, okay? Like that. See that how I'm softening it up? And I'm also removing some of the ink. So when I start taking it in here like so... So that little tinge of it. Now, let me see if I can see it here. Okay, you can see it. It's it's real. It's not terribly visible. You can kind of see it starting to turn though, right? But you see how light it is. Don't start scrubbing on here because I can't see anything with one tap, right? 
But look at this, with multiple taps, you can kind of start developing it like this. Some people have a trouble with light and retaining some area down here. I like to leave a little bit of light down here. So when I move into my darker tones, I'll just leave it as is, okay? I'll show you what I mean by that when I get in, you know, get a little bit further along. Okay. In my video on easy lighting um, schemes, I show this simple light up in the sky area, light down on the ground area, source of light, reflected light. That's generally what I go for, especially in quarter size page scenes. I usually don't have 20 areas of light or something like that. It's usually just a couple. I keep it very simple. So in other words, as I'm toning in like this, just don't tone out everything. You know, It's as simple as it can possibly be. And people are saying, oh my gosh, that's easy for you to say. Well, just don't color it in. You know, Don't touch there. Don't touch. <laughs> All right. And I get it. I do get it. I've taught a lot before, so when people are getting kind of the feeling of coloring, they're used to coloring in the whole area. Okay, this is grass, and they're used to it being, you know, kind of coloring outlined areas like a coloring book where you color in whole fields, okay? On this one, you're just kind of putting the brakes on a little bit. Don't color as much. Leave a little bit open like this instead of, you know, so what you do is you get color, okay? But you also get lighting. See that lighting that's starning to happen down there? It's because I toned this in a little bit darker. That area seems a little bit lighter, okay? So just kind of put the brakes on yourself. You know, you've been kind of, there's a lot of muscle memory that takes place when uh, you, you're doing a lot of coloring, okay? And that style of coloring is kind of more like, like a adult coloring book coloring, okay? You can get different textures and things like that, but the fields are all kind of uniform, you know, and then you get to another field, and that's a different field of color. Now, just see this as like doing kind of a little bit of a vignette. You've colored in areas of um, pieces, and around the edges, you know, a lot of people put their, you know, a little bit of texture. It's a little bit, you know, darker around like an edge or something like that. Well, you're just doing that whole thing. You're just kind of creating that vignette, but within different spaces of your scene, okay? So instead of it just being around on the edge, okay, framing things off, you might be framing off several little areas, okay? Now this one right here, see, I'm kind of just framing off this green area, the grass area, like so. And see what it looks like? It looks like the light is kind of shining down here onto the grass. It's like this little spotlit area. Okay, so we've achieved, you know, some pretty decent lighting in here. I usually like to make it a little bit darker underneath my trees or underneath objects. Here's some area down here that we can go a little bit darker. Okay. Yeah, let's see if we have some other greens. Um, I'm tempted to try some of those um, some recent colors that I got in the form of hybrid inks, but um, I would guess they would go down here just fine. I'm not sure, because they're very surface-oriented. If I use those, I'm going to use those after I use the dye-based inks. Okay, this is a jungle green right here, so it's just going a little bit darker. Okay. When you move into your darker tones, this is what I used to tell people um, in my workshops, when you get into the darker tones, I'd be kind of walking around saying, okay, remember to retain this, because a lot of times people get those first couple colors down, they left, left their light, but then when they get into their darker tones, suddenly they've toned everything out again, because they just couldn't put the brakes on with the darker colors. With the darker colors, all you have to do, um, all you have to do is keep in mind, um, they become a little bit more perimeter oriented. Okay, let me see. I need... Uh, let's do this right here. Let's do it with this br uh, kind of uh, olive. Oh, this is olive brown. I thought this was like olive brown green or something like that. See, I can use this pen right here to get some color too, right? Okay, so let's go underneath these trees a little bit more. It's 
little it's a little bit darker. It's like olive green to me. Okay. All right. I think that is about right. I'm going to go all the way to black on this one. Normally I'd start addressing some of my sky, but I have my applicator right here and I want to make use of this one. So let's go right on into the, the black. I'm just using the same one so that it's every time I move to a new color, there's it's some combination of the current color and the previous one, which makes a nice easy transition into the current one because it's a fusion of this one plus all the past ones, especially the one right before it. Okay, so let's take a look and see how this shadow looks underneath here. See how kind of, you know, sparsely I use it? So I don't use it as much as I do, with like that first lighter green. Coming in here. Kind of underneath these trees. It's becoming very bottom heavy, but I'll take care of that later. All right, looks good. Okay, I think I'm, well, I'm done with this one for now. Let's grab another paper towel. Let's see what we have here. I think I've used this one. <laughs> These two have been used as much as, okay, let me get a new one. Okay, not a bad applicator, right? Nice and easy. Easy in terms of access, and uh, I don't know, I guess financially, whatever. Okay, let's try some different versions of blue here, okay? Now, where are we gonna use that? Okay, up in the sky. The sky, I mean, it looks okay as is, but it's not real related to the bottom part with all these dye-based ink applications. Unless you want that contrast between, I don't know, maybe what would be considered real or whatever, and illustrated or whatever. But I want a little bit more continuity here, so I'm going to take some dye-based inks and apply them to my sky area, okay? Let's put a little bit of color in these clouds, maybe, too, okay? This is a very, very light value of blue. Do you see it right in here? Well, it's a little bit different than over here. Okay, so let's, let's just tint. It's like tinting some of my clouds. And uh, for those who think this is really hard, okay, because I'm going very light like this, let me show you some horrible technique. Don't do this, okay? You know, I want, uh, don't, I don't suggest you use that technique, okay? Just color in like that, but when you start off very, very light like this, it's very, very forgiving. You can practically do whatever you want with it. But see, the darker I want it to go, you know, I had to apply quite a few taps down there, and then that's the color of blue. That, I, that it will become with a full saturation, okay? But you don't have to use full saturation to use very light ones here and there, okay? And use heavier ones to get kind of a, more of a, you know, statement of that color. Okay, I'm bringing some of it down here in my grass as well. It doesn't look like light blue because the green is down there already and these stinks are transparent. Let's go to this one right here. Let's try this one. I'm starting to move up into my medium tone blue, so, you know, kind of be careful about your application of it. Don't go too heavy too fast. Maybe blot it off a little bit to get a drier brushed application of it. Okay. 
putting a little bit on my chapel too, okay? Just to give it a little bit of continuity between sky and ground. I'm bringing some of this blue into my grass down here for the same reason. A little bit of continuity between those areas right there. But isn't that a nice blue right there? It's kind of fun having that ink up there in the sky. It just kind of, I don't know, enhances it. It, it tints it. All right, Danube blue. It's kind of a darker blue. Let's kind of, uh, eh, it seems like it matches that blue pretty, pretty well in terms of value. I think it looks pretty good. So you can kind of fine tune, you know, your sky elements if you want to with color. If it was sunset, then use warm tones up there. Skies aren't always blue. They're whatever colors, you know, uh, whatever color of light is shining on them. They're very reflective of that um, type of thing, light, whatever. All right, so there we go like that. Look at that over there. That is ink, and that's you know, just as is. So it looks pretty good. And what am I doing? I'm staying more perimeter oriented with this darker blue, see? Just like I did to here. Stay away from this lighting right here. So doesn't it look like, you know, light is coming down from the sky and shining on this? And that's where coloring for lighting comes in. Coloring for lighting is not... It's, it's a different concept, okay, in terms of, you know, you're not doing as much, but it is exactly that. You're just not doing as much. Does coloring for lighting take longer? I don't think so, because I didn't apply all of that ink, those darker tones, down here, which would eradicate that. We would lose all of our lighting, okay? So I think that looks pretty good in terms of uh, that, I don't know, this particular lighting scheme in here, okay. So, all right, that is that. Um, I'm kind of assessing this now, figuring out what I want to do, but I think it's time to apply a little bit of a white pigment ink. This is where I really have fun on scenes. Scenic stamping. I like adding mood. It doesn't have to be through the uh, white pigment ink, but it's certainly the easiest thing you could possibly do, okay, to add a lot of atmosphere into it. What makes this hard is when people try to rush it too much, okay? It's kind of the opposite of shading in here with um, highlighting, going with a light color over dark. What you want to do is you want to go with the same um, kind of methodology in terms of applying something very dry brush-like and controlled, okay? So, I dip this into this pad right here, this white pad, and it's pretty juicy right now. Let me grab my black paper. I do this demonstration every time it shows because this could be your first video that you've seen, but see how blotchy that is right there? And this is one tap, okay? It leaves that. Now watch this if I do it a few times, okay? I'm removing some of the ink off the pad. Kind of spreading it around evenly. Now watch when I do this tap right here. Okay, see that right there? Watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's still very light compared to that, right? I'm not squishing this down either. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 20. See that right there? That's what you want right there. That was twenty taps. Okay? Now don't think, oh my gosh, this is gonna take forever, you know? It's not going to take a long time. 20 taps is like five seconds or something like that. So watch what this can kind of accomplish, okay? I'm adding this in areas where light meets dark. So let's hope we can zoom in here a little bit. I mean, those clouds already look pretty good, but I'm adding a little bit more of this texture. Now watch where I'm adding it right here on the, t you know, right over these trees. So doesn't that tree look like it's kind of reflecting some of that light right there because it's it's lighter to begin with. Okay, let me see. Let me move this down here. It looks really good where light meets dark. So light meets dark right on those trees, right? So look at this. When I put it over some of those trees, doesn't it look like that tree is kind of bathed in light right now? 
Isn't that beautiful? It makes the trees look so much more interesting to me. Now, here's where light meets dark here, too, right? And I put a little bit over it already, but look at that right there. See that? Don't put it over everything, then, you know, we've kind of eradicated everything that we've done, you know, in terms of creating shadows and colors and whatnot. But that's where everyone that has a hard time with this, you know, kind of gives up. It's because I go like this, and there's like a big blotch, you know, of it. Or it's like lighting. They give up on lighting because they keep filling in this whole area. They just cannot put the brakes on. They do if they're in my class because I keep repeating it to them. You know, don't do that. You know, leave that there. Don't touch it. Stay away. <laughs> Uh, I, I just say the same thing over and over again. Um, but in here, just don't tone everything out, okay? So, with the shading and coloring, I don't color in everything uh, in the shadows, okay? In the dark areas. With highlighting, I don't tone everything out with my highlighting. I don't highlight everything. So look at that atmosphere being created with that. Right over here. See that? It does. It's, it's, it looks like a photograph still somewhat, but doesn't that look somewhat painted now too? And I can control. See, I added a little bit more blue in here to add some shadows. Now I'm just kind of going in here and I'm adding highlighting with this. So it kind of I don't know, to me it has this feel of this painted piece. Okay, now, before I get too far ahead of myself here, one of the things that I tend to forget about, because I'm kind of getting into whatever media I'm working in, like there's this little chapel in here, if you want to use some alcohol pens or something like that to color it in, alcohol pens are fantastic, because it won't put, you know, those dye-based, water-based inks into solution. Now this is a really light shade. You might probably couldn't see what I was doing at all because I could barely see it. On here, I'm just kind of drawing in some of this lighter tone, okay? You can kind of add more shadows underneath your trees if you want to. Uh, you have to do this before you go on with uh, your pigment ink because if you go with the pigment ink and then you come on with these pens, um, the pens will um, just dissolve all of your applications of uh, media that you've applied with the cotton ball, you know, the pigment ink. Okay, let's see. Let's get a little bit more bold here. Let's go with a little bit of yellow fall foliage in these trees, the deciduous trees. These tree clusters are part deciduous, part um, evergreen. All right, so doing a little blending in them too. Okay, you can put some on your chapel if you want to, and then okay, so just kind of come in with different colors. Here's a little bit of orange. It's just bringing things a little bit to life, huh? All right, I don't like that how that looks when I apply it, so what I do is I just go back in with a lighter color, and then I blend them out. The alcohol pens blend beautifully on photo prints, okay? It just kind of puts them right back into solution. You can just kind of blend them away. I'm not using a blender pen, but I'm using just a lighter color. Um, kind of related to the color that I just applied, but a lighter version of it. And I'm using that as kind of a blender pen kind of idea. Okay, so that looks good to me. Let's just keep going on with my, it's hard to tell where that ink is on here. I don't know, I've forgotten. Is this, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Let's see. All right, let's use a little bit of this down here. This looks really kind of murky right there. So let's kind of add a little of this mist, morning mist down here. 
starting in lighter areas and working into the darker areas, okay? Pigment ink will dry a little bit darker looking than what it looks like when it's been freshly applied, okay? So I go a little bit more, sometimes a lot more than I think, than what I think looks kind of ideal. Okay. See that kind of blanket of fog down there? Let's alter that tree back there a little bit more, that distant tree. Or distant trees. Kind of putting some up here in the sky area. We're really getting foggy here in this morning. I'm <laughs> finding this is really fun to apply. Uh, I just, and when I tell people don't apply it everywhere, I'm kind of telling myself that as well. But on this one, just that cloud formation back there, it's, I don't know, it looks like it's really kind of conducive for the whole kind of look. Let's, let's try something right here. Let's put a little bit behind that meadowy area and let's mask it off a little bit. Let's give this little kind of um, illumination down at the base of the trees, kind of that low-lying fog type of look. there. It's way too much. <laughs> so let's go like that, okay, and let's diffuse it a touch like this. Have it kind of rolling in like so. This is, I don't know, when I start doing this, I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm painting um, with this technique. Because it almost is like paint. It's, it's like white paint that you're applying. Okay. Let me see if you get too much, just kind of blot it off. I'm trying to have that really light right in there to look like that cloud in the background, you know, from the cloud photo is kind of pouring into the scene. Kind of coming over that ridge and just kind of oozing into the terrain that illuminated Illuminated mist, it kind of, I don't know, to me it, it becomes kind of a, its own character, it's like a, this living thing, kind of living, breathing thing, like that. 
kind of interesting, huh? Uh, just in terms of uh, kind of where things might lead to um, within the process of a, making a card or doing a scene. All right, that's a lot more pigment ink than I thought I was going to use and I would generally recommend. All right, let me, let me try to use some of this cotton ball. The cotton ball one is where everyone gets these big balls everywhere, but you just have to really blot it off. I, I fray my tip a little bit and soften it up. Okay, I remove a lot of the ink, but you can kind of get a little bit more specific with this. So I'm kind of, you kind of condense it and kind of spread it out a little bit. Where people get dots is or when they use it like that, you know, just too um, isolated like this. Okay, so you, what you do is you just stay in a little area and spread it around as much as you can. Silver line clouds. It's kind of more atmospheric. It's like an atmospheric, uh, trying to think of that uh, phase and uh, or movement in uh, landscape painting I can't think of it right now but anyways it's really starting to come around I'm finding I'm I don't know I mean, this is like the most used media on this piece right here it's certainly yeah, I don't know well, I mean, the dye-based inks were certainly important. You wouldn't see anything without it. But just in terms of um, creating mood, I would say that this is probably the thing that I'm utilizing in here uh, for that mood. Okay. The media. All right, let's move on here. And let's use some white acrylic paint pen, okay. Let's put little highlights down here. It's fun to add little crisp highlights. Everything gets so um, kind of diffused um, and soft, which you can keep as is, but um, I like to have a little bit of a balance within a piece in terms of um, crisp little details um, to play against the uh, kind of the, the more general applications of both color and uh, things like that white pigment ink there, you know, from a textural standpoint. The, the white pigment makes things look very soft, you know, but um, having these little crisp highlights like this in a piece, it's, it provides kind of a nice contrast and balance. I mean, you don't see the details, you know. I mean, you can certainly see them like this. Right, but when you hold it up at arm's distance, you look at a scene like this. It, you know, they don't stand out too much, and I don't want them to. I want them to be kind of one of the more those more kind of detailed little surprises for those that are looking at the piece. Okay, putting some of this on my tree uh, branches. Or I don't know, clusters of leaves, I guess. I can put some highlights on these areas that are kind of closest to the light. I 
Okay, I'm going to put some on this chapel too, just to bring some of the light onto it. I'm, the things that are kind of light inherently will get a little bit of a highlight. So, when I put my hand on this, I'm, it feels sticky because of all that pigment ink on there. A little chapel right there, little highlights on there. These little specks of light like this, I think it makes it feel a little bit more welcoming too. You know, light d tends to be that we want to, you know, we're drawn to it. Visually, whatever, not if you're in poltergeist, but uh, you want to stay away. But, uh, you know, just in general, you know, we tend to look where that, you know, light is emanating from. been going through in my head is do I want to add a little bit more depth in here with the use of uh, some darker foreground imagery and I'm just I'm kind of neutral about it right now um, but I think I'm going to do it just because I don't know I don't know whether I want to do it or not, so I'm just going to do it. Uh, I, I think uh, it could make it look better, you know. Um, it might not, but I always think it's good to uh, just kind of go for it. I'm going to use a black hybrid ink. I'm finding that the hybrid inks work really well. Um, it's pigment and dye. And that's because I'm stamping over that pigment ink down there. And maybe because there's pigment ink in here or something like that, it just kind of goes over it really well. Alright, I'm not going to close off everything. I'm not going to just eradicate my foreground trees that I had there before, so I'm going to kind of intersperse this within that space. Okay, so I'll stamp some a little bit lower and around or under those first impressions of the foreground imagery. And I think that looks pretty good. I think it looks, I don't know, like there's a little bit more depth maybe. Quite a bit of depth in here, huh? And isn't that fun up there with that cloudy background? I went crazy with that white pigment ink. Um, I don't know if that's the most pigment ink I've ever used in a scene, um, in terms of percentage over a scene, but it's right up there learning something new every day, all the time. You know, it's, I have been using um, kind of white pigment ink as like a dominant feature in, you know, some of my recent uh, videos, but um, maybe that's played into this one right here. I'm kind of getting a little bit more gutsy with it. 
So this right here, I'm just kind of adding a little bit more of this. You kind of have to build some up in areas that, where you want it to be fairly light because it does dry darker. Okay, and you can let it completely dry and go back into it. You can kind of wait to see where it goes you know, before you kind of apply more. But see, I'm kind of doing this at the top of the uh, cloud, kind of trying to give a little bit more dimension to the cloud. in terms of variation of light and dark. Yeah, this area right here really uh, darkened up. As I seem to recall, this area right in here got a lot lighter with that cotton ball. So just, I don't know, just applying another layer, just building up, it, building it up accordingly. Okay, I think that is about it. Cloud, wow. Chapel in the clouds. Not literally, but visually, for, sh you know, for sure. And I think we have ended this at just the right time, because I hear a weed whacker outside. Gardeners are here. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and this scene as much as I enjoyed creating it. I, it really changed there towards the end, didn't it, with all of that pigment ink. That's one of those things, you know, I mean, like I said, that image kind of blurred in there and it kind of looked murky in there with all the color, but I just know that when you add all these little embellishments in there, it brings everything together in the end. That's why I always tell people and the, uh, especially in the Yahoo group where, you know, we're posting to each other and stuff like that all the time. I've always recommended just kind of sticking with a scene. I didn't like this one through most of it, but I really like how it ended up. And that's because of all these solutions that kind of came into play. And it, I did some things that, um, that I wasn't expecting to in the beginning because I had no idea where it was going to go, but I think it ended with a kind of a cool result in terms of the different looks. I love this kind of watercolory diffusion back here of color, and that's with the use of a lot more pigment ink. So that's not always the solution, you know. Sometimes less is more or whatever, less is better or more effective, you know. But in this case, you know, using quite a bit kind of came into, uh, kind of worked in my favor. Look at all these little areas down here. Another layer of trees in the foreground to create a little bit more depth to contrast against those, you know, the more diffused forms. Crisp and dark, low, you know, diffused in color, higher, okay? So anyways, um, hope you enjoyed it. Again, thanks for tuning into the channel. If you like this video, hope you like, share, and subscribe.